Hey guys, Will here. Now today we're going to be taking a look at force feedback settings for the Moza R9 wheelbase in F1 2022, as well as button mappings for the GS wheel. So force feedback, of course, is a very subjective thing, but that said, there are a couple of fundamentals which I believe are important to getting a good experience. You want to have the force feedback as smooth as you possibly can. You want to remove as much robotic feel as you possibly can from the wheel. Whilst doing that, you also want to maintain as much detail in the force feedback as you can to get a good sense of exactly what the car is doing underneath you. So that's that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. Let's get started. So there's two different areas where we're going to be adjusting force feedback settings today. The Mozart Pit House software, as well as the force feedback adjustments inside F1 2022 itself. So let's start off with the Pit House software here. This is the main screen. If you haven't already, I would recommend configuring the game as well. That's going to ensure that the rev indicator and the dash, if you have it, are functioning. So if the game is automatically detected, you'll see a little configure button here. All you need to do is click that and it will automatically edit the XML files to make everything work for you. If it doesn't automatically detect the game, you can click on launch from custom path point it to where your executable is for F122 and then click on that configure button and you'll be all up and running. So we're gonna jump on down to the wheelbase settings tab now. You'll notice down the bottom here, there is an import setting button. Now we have made these exact settings which we're covering in today's video available for you guys to download on our website, boostedmedia.net. I'll put a link to the exact location in the description box down below this video. So you can just import our settings, but what I would recommend doing is spending the time here to really fine tune things to your personal preference based on the settings that we're recommending to you guys today. When you do get settings that you like, you can of course save them here as well so that you can load them in or send them to your mates later on. So let's begin here with steering angle. We're gonna leave the maximum limit and steering angle adjustment set to synchronous so they work in unison together. And we're gonna set both of those to 360 degrees as a starting point. That means that we've got 360 degrees of rotation in the wheel before we hit those soft bump stops on the direct drive wheelbase. So that's gonna give us enough sensitivity there to get around some of those tight corners. If you are running a track like Monaco, you may want to make this a little bit more sensitive. In real life, F1 drivers do actually make their steering a little bit more sensitive for some of those tighter tracks. Although you do just need to remember here that that will have an impact on your muscle memory. So you generally want to try and keep this as consistent as you possibly can. But if you are struggling to get around some of those hairpins, you can reduce it a little bit further. But I definitely wouldn't recommend going above about 360 degrees of rotation. Road sensitivity, we're going to set to level 10. Gain force feedback intensity, 100%. Maximum speed to steering wheel we're setting to 50%. Mechanical back to center strength, we don't need that because that is only for games that don't have force feedback to give you an artificial return to center effect on the wheel. Mechanical dampening actually ended up running that all the way at 100% just to give me that slightly smoother feel whilst maintaining some of the finer effects. Now, if you're finding that the settings that we have here are too strong for you and it's just overpowering you in general, then you can adjust that up and down using the game force feedback intensity slider up here. And if we jump across to advanced settings here, we can also limit the maximum torque output too. So if you're finding that some of your crashes are just too intense or it's just overall too strong for you, you wanna limit that maximum torque, then you can do so here. But for a nine Newton meter wheelbase, I would imagine most people are probably gonna end up leaving this on 100%. We don't need to reverse the game force feedback. Now handoff protection, we are gonna turn this one on. Obviously this doesn't have an impact on how the force feedback feels, but it is an important setting. We do find that Mozza wheelbases at the moment at least do have a tendency to oscillate a little bit, which means if you let go of the wheel or you loosen your grip on the wheel, the wheel tends to buck from left to right a little bit here. Now steering wheel inertia ratio, this is related to the hands-off protection. So what this does is it basically filters out a certain sort of frequency where it's oscillating. So I found for me 3200 seemed to work pretty well, but you can fine tune this to minimize in your particular usage case. Base status indicator is just a setting for the little LED in the front of the base. Soft limit strength, this is the hardness of the soft bump stop when we reach the limit of our rotation. So you can fine tune that to be either soft, middle or hard. Again, that's purely just down to personal preference. I prefer a softer feeling. Just gives you that sensation of actually pulling up against a, you know, some sort of a mechanical bump stop rather than it just being like a robotic hard limit there. Soft limit gain force feedback strength. This allows you to retain a little bit of force feedback through the wheel once you have passed that bump stop. So I would recommend leaving that turned on. And then current mode, all this does is just switch the base off. So obviously we wanna leave this on work mode. Natural inertia, this is the amount that the wheel sort of tries to continue moving after you've stopped trying to rotate it yourself. It gives you a sensation of being mechanically connected to something that has its own inertia inside the car. So having this at around 
100% felt pretty good for me. It just slightly dampens any robotic feel and gives you that sensation of the wheel being physically connected to something. Now similar with mechanical friction as well, I set this to 40%. Again, this gives you a sensation of the wheel being physically connected to something, but this is more about giving you a sensation of weight in the wheel overall, rather than it's sort of the inertia of the components that it's connected to. So between the two of those, you can fine tune to your personal preference. This is a very subjective thing, but you'll find if you run these too low, then the wheel feels quite light all the time, but then the force feedback effects feel quite strong on top of that. So 200% and 40% here seem to be a pretty good balance. Speed dependent dampening, this slightly modifies the feeling of the wheel based on the speed that the vehicle's moving. So we set that to 60% and then with a starting point of 200 kilometers an hour, obviously F1 cars tend to be going pretty quickly, but again, you can fine tune this to your own personal preference. And then across enforced feedback equalizer, this was purely just a case of fine tuning those frequency bands to try and again, remove any robotic feel whilst maintaining as much linearity and smoothness in the wheel as we possibly could. So you can see there, we dropped down 10 Hertz and 15 Hertz to 70% each. We bumped up 25 Hertz to 160%, 180% for 40 Hertz, and then 50 Hertz is sitting at 150%. So we're gonna come back to pit house a little bit later on to show you how we've mapped the clutch on the GS wheel, but let's jump into F122 now and show you the force feedback settings inside the game. Okay, so inside F122 now, we're gonna go down to game options. We're gonna go into settings. We're gonna scroll down to controls, vibration, and force feedback. And from here, we're gonna select whichever profile has detected your Mozza R9, your wheel, and of course, your pedals. Now, if it's the first time that you've launched the game with your wheel, or wheelbase connected, then it is gonna come up and prompt you to assign some controls. And basically that's just gonna take you to the same screen as what we see here if I select my Mozza R9 and GS wheel profile. So we're gonna go into edit, and you should see a screen like this with undefined or unassigned for most of the controls. And we're gonna come back in a minute to all of my control assignments here, but let's for now go into vibration and force feedback. You can see here, obviously we need to have vibration and force feedback turned on, and then these are our individual settings. So for vibration and force feedback strength, I've wound this back to 95 from the default setting of 100. Now that was to avoid clipping. Now clipping is when the signal that's coming out of the game overloads the ability of the wheelbase to actually process that signal. And what ends up happening is instead of getting a nice smooth feel, you end up with a robotic or jerky feeling, which is obviously something that you want to avoid. So winding that down to 95 seemed to work quite well. And from here on down, it's just purely about getting the right balance between different effects, not having one effect being too strong compared to others. So the combination of force feedback strength and wheel damper is what's gonna give you the overall sensation of the car moving around on the road. So I found having this set to around 50% seemed to give me a good balance of you know overall feeling in the car without it feeling too robotic or jerky. And then I fine tuned the on-track effects, rumble strip effects and off-track effects around that level to kind of get the right balance, again, for my personal preference. So on-track effects, this is environmental effects like road textures, for example. I set that to 40%. Rumble strip effects, 50%. Now you can crank that up if you wanna really kinda of get rumbled around, but again, you don't wanna, you know, you don't wanna have so much vibration going on that it affects your ability to actually control the car. So 50% there seemed to feel pretty good. And then for off-track effects, I wound this down to 20% purely because the objective whenever I'm off the track, so on the grass or in gravel, is obviously to get the car back onto the track as quickly as possible. It doesn't necessarily feel super realistic, and if you are looking for ultimate realism, you may wanna wind this up a little bit, but I just wanted to be able to get back on the track as quickly as was possible, which is why I set this to 20%. So understeer enhance, with this turned on, it gives you a greater sensation of understeering the car or that kind of disconnect between the wheels and the road. So what happens is the force feedback becomes quite light. Now, depending on how you've got your other settings configured, you may not find you need this. It is a fine line between getting that sensation of loss of grip and being able to dial back the speed so you're actually feeling something that is communicating what the car's doing and having it feel just completely disconnected to the point where you don't really have much sensation in the steering at all. So experiment with turning this on or off. I prefer having it on, but it is very much a personal preference thing. And then maximum wheel rotation, we just wanna match this to the same value that we had inside the Mozza Pit House software. And it is as simple as that for force feedback. So let's jump back across to Mozza Pit House now and have a look at how we can set up a few elements of the wheel.
Okay, so back in the Moza Pit House software now, we're down on the wheel tab. Let's talk a little bit about configuration options for the GS steering wheel. So there's a couple of different ways to launch cars in the Codemasters F1 games. You can use the shifter paddles to purely just have like an on-off switch for the clutch and basically just get the revs to the optimum level, let go of the clutch and get underway that way. You can also have an analog clutch like what you would have in a normal street car. You let the clutch out to the right point and the car gets underway. And then you also have the option for a dual stage clutch with this wheel which is what we're going to set up here so we're going to click on axis combine and then what that allows us to do is set it so one hand releases to get the car underway and then you release the other hand to minimize the amount of wheel spin off the line so essentially what this does is when you've got both paddles pulled in that is 100 clutch when you release one hand it takes you to whatever threshold you want to adjust this to to get the car just underway without any wheel spin and then you release the second hand to actually pull away off the line. Now, unfortunately, there isn't a finite number that I can give you here. It will purely just depend on how much revs you're giving the car off the line. So if you just foot flat to the floor, you're gonna wanna have this adjustment up a little bit higher. If you prefer to launch the car at lower RPM, then you can get away with having this a little bit lower. So it definitely pays to experiment with this. What I would recommend is just jump into a practice mode session, You know, put it in, put it in first gear off the line, make sure you're on a flat surface with the clutches in, and then just experiment with this until you find the point where you can get the car underway with minimum wheel spin and minimum bogging down and that will be the value that you want to use it should be pretty uniform between cars in the Cody's F1 games. So once you've got this set, you probably won't need to touch it again. Obviously, if you wanna use a single stage clutch, you would set this to axis split and then just map one side or the other to your clutch. And if you wanna have it operate like a button or just an on off switch, then you can do that here as well in button mode, but we're gonna leave this on axis combined. Now, knob modes, we're gonna to set to knob and D-pad. This is purely just to make mapping inside the game a little bit easier later on. RPM indicator, you can switch this off, have it permanently illuminated or have it set so it displays the RPMs matching the car. We're gonna leave it on RPM indicator, but again, that is purely up to you. And then display mode, we've got a couple of different modes of operation here, depending on how you like to see things displayed on the screen. Again, purely subjective. Then we also have an engine RPM indicator timing here as well, which allows you to adjust the stages in which each LED will illuminate relative to the RPM inside the game. So if you prefer to rev the engine out a little bit more, you may wanna customize this, but I'm finding that have it set to late seems to work pretty well for me. So that is everything that you need inside Moza Pit House. And again, you can save those settings and export them if you wanna send them to your mates. Let's head on back over to F122 now and show you how I've got my controls mapped. So back in F122 now, let's have a look at our button mappings for the GS wheel. So these are the settings that I've found work well for me. They're very similar to the settings that I've been using all the way since back in F1 2018 on the Fnatic V2 wheel, which I was using back before I was using this one. So let's go through here now. Uh, accelerate, brake, those are obviously gonna be mapped to your pedals. Steer left, steer right, obviously mapped to the steering. Uh, pause, I've got set to the little P button here. Gear up is obviously our shifting up paddle. Gear down, a shifting down paddle. Clutch is assigned to our clutch paddle, so everything here very self-explanatory so far. Next camera I've actually got set to the ABS wheel down the bottom here. So I purely just pulse it to the right every time I wanna change through cameras. Not something that I'm doing very often anyway. Look forward, track only, I've got set to the forward arrow, down, left and right for looking in the various different directions. Replay or flashback, I've got that set to the R button here. Obviously you wanna have this map to something that you're not likely to bump by accident when you're driving. So that is important. Now if you are finding that you're still bumping this unintentionally, you can just leave this completely unmapped on your wheel and rely on your keyboard for mapping that control. Activate DRS, I like to have that on my left hand side thumb. You could have it on the right hand side, again, just purely depending on your preference. Pit limiter, I have that set to the PL button here. Radio and voice commands I've got mapped to the end button. Multifunctional display is set to the whip button. Up, down, left and right for the menu is set to the right hand side stick here. And then push to talk I've got set to S1. And then overtake is mapped to the TR button on the right hand side so I can reach that nice and easily. Menu controls, you can just map these to be whatever you want. But the other really important one is right down the very bottom here. What I generally like to do is if you have a button box, you wanna assign some buttons for car setup, pit setup, car damage panel, engine state panel, and car temperature panel. You can also set these to the F keys, for example, on your keyboard, should you wish to do so. Another cool thing you could do is just have a number pad somewhere that you can use as a button box and assign those. That just allows you to tab through 
the individual settings panels on the car nice and easily without having to take your eyes off the road. But in terms of controls on the wheel itself, I have my fuel mix increase and decrease set to the left-hand side thumb wheel or the brake bias adjustment here. Fuel maps is something that you are finding that you're adjusting on the fly quite frequently and often mid-corner as well. So obviously you don't wanna be taking your eyes off the road or moving your hands around on the wheel to reach that. So you wanna have that in a nice convenient position. Similar with our ERS increase and decrease. Again, this is something you're gonna be changing frequently, often mid-corner once again. So I've got that set to the right-hand side here. Obviously you can switch between the two sides depending on your personal preference. Brake bias increase and decrease. I have that set to the top left button here and then our differential increase and decrease I have set Set to bottom right here but again you can map that however you want on the wheel purely up to personal preference but I would recommend having the ERS and the fuel trim modes set to the thumb wheels just because it's easier to reach those while you are driving and that is it guys so I hope this video has helped you out leave a thumbs up if it has and if you want to see more detail on any of the gear that we've looked at today including detailed reviews of this and a bunch of other sim racing hardware head on over to boostedmedia.net and check us out thanks for watching guys see you again soon bye